Hi, my name is Abby Crossan, and I'm coming to you today from Seattle, Washington. Um, it's sunny today, but most days you hear rain in the background. You're inside my house right now, and you see a little bit of construction to one side and a little bit of second grade happening in the other side. I'm excited to be here today to share with you about a profession that I have really grown to love and that lots of people I know love. It's the world of event planners and event professionals. Um, as we go through this talk today, I hope to share with you what event planning is, a little bit about my pathway to event planning, the day in the life of an event planner, what you can expect if you do an event when we dive a little deeper into an event that I've done for eight years, and hopefully you'll come away with some of the things that are great about it and the things you might want to do to explore it more. Anyway, thanks for listening. What is event planning? You might have friends or family who volunteer lots of time in your community making events happen they are using skills event planners use. A simple definition of event planning is the process of managing a project such as a meeting, convention, trade show, ceremony, team building activity, or party. It is a diverse world of opportunities that range across private, charity, and corporate customers. Big companies like Nike, Microsoft, Starbucks, and other ones you might know employ event professionals or planners to make amazing experiences for their customers and employees. Have you ever been to a comic book convention, stopped by an exhibit hall at the state fair, attended a fancy wedding, enjoyed a meal at a charity auction, or gone to a party or dance at your school? Then you have probably enjoyed the work of an event planner. Maybe you have a friend who is really great at getting all the details right. They might be an aspiring event planner. A event planner's work is key to making your experience event smooth, fun, and beautiful. Now let's talk a little bit about how I made my way to event planning. I started with a degree in architecture from the University of Cincinnati. I planned on being an architect and working in that field for all the rest of my time professionally, but I ended up realizing that I wanted to use those creativity and other graphic skills I gained to do other things. While I was at University of Cincinnati, I managed to go on some wonderful internships that were part of the um, experience there. If you go to a school or a university that has internships, take advantage of them. They're really amazing experiences. One of the internships that I landed in was at the White House. I was an intern there in the party planning office. That was probably my first experience seeing the amazing things that event planners did to make parties happen for the president and first lady. That was one of the first glimpses I had into event planning and maybe put a little spark in me about this career. After college, I ended up being a university administrator at the University of Illinois and the University of Washington. And while I was at the University of Illinois, I had the chance to do some additional training and got a degree in elementary education. Those two experiences, elementary education and my work at the universities taught me about organization, how to share information with people, how to negotiate, and lots of other skills that I've used in event planning. Most recently, I had the wonderful opportunity to work for a friend's company as a catering manager. There, I learned how to manage budgets, how to get things to people on time, how to be really, really detail-oriented. No one out there wants their food late or when they're not expecting it. So being a catering manager requires that you stay focused on client needs. You can see on this slide some of the skills that I've used over time. Maybe some of those are skills you're really good at already, so you might want to consider this profession. Now a little bit about the day in the life of an event planner. Event planners go through sort of three cycles when they're planning an event. Before the event, on site at the event, and after the event. We're in, when we're in the before the event period, that's about six to 12 months. That's from the time the event is imagined to the time it goes on site and we have the event. That time, most of the time, we're working eight hour days, kind of like a regular job, just eight hour days of phone calls, conversations, meeting with vendors, finding things we need to make the event really fabulous for our clients. Some of that time, there are tricky things that come up that we have to solve, but it's a pretty regular, steady um, amount of work. Once we go on site, which is maybe the coolest part of being an event planner, you might get to fly to an interesting location. A lot of events happen in Las Vegas. A lot of events happen in big cities like Chicago, New York, Boston, 
um, places in Florida like Orlando that have big event spaces. So you'll often go on site for one to five days. Most events, you know, five days is kind of the max. Um, when you're on site, those days are super long, like 12 hour days, maybe even longer, depending on what you're trying to get done. The fun thing about being on site is you get to go to interesting places. You get to see the people actually enjoying all that work you did in before the event. And sometimes you even get to enjoy a little bit of the event when you get to hang out at a party at the end of the day and see everybody having so much fun. So that is what on-site is like, a little glimpse into it. Then after the event, when the event is finished and you've wrapped up all the things on-site, you spend a little bit of time documenting the event, figuring out what went well, what didn't go so great, and getting ready to present to your client, the person who is hosting the event, the, the main customer, maybe that's Microsoft, maybe that's Nike, maybe that's some of the other companies I mentioned, you share with them data so that the next time they hold the event, they can make things even better. So one of the things I wanted to share with you was a little bit about an event that I have worked on for about eight years. It's called the Washington State Nonprofit Conference. This is a conference that's held every year in the state of Washington. Um, it's run by a local nonprofit and it's a chance for small companies, small nonprofits to come together. If you don't know what a nonprofit is, a nonprofit might be like the Boys and Girls Club, some kind of running club that you might be a part of. Um, many different organization, organizations and cities are nonprofits. Even churches are nonprofits. So all of these nonprofits come together for this great day. What you're seeing on the screen now is a picture of the main stage at the conference and a big screen filled with the logo. And then what you're seeing on the right side is um, a picture of the conference program. That's something that we work on hard throughout the um, months leading up to the conference to make it just right with the right images, the right messaging, the right graphics. So as an event planner for this event, my job is to make sure that the connection between the event center, the convention center, and the client, who is the group hosting the conference, is really smooth. So the kind of things I think about are how are people going to get around the space. So I think about signage. You see a picture here of a sign mock-up where it says room, heading, additional text. I also think about what the client and the um, attendees are going to see. What are they going to see when they come in on the table? So in the middle you see a little sketch, a quick sketch that I did. Um, to show them what a centerpiece might look like. This client that I've worked on in this event doesn't have a huge budget. And so we try to um, take simple things and make them have a big impact. So you'll see here it's just a simple marigold with a little bit of um, fabric around the bottom and some paper on the table. I did that from sketch to actually putting those on the table on the day of the event. One of the other things I focus on on this event is the food and beverage. When people come to an event, what they have to eat is crucial to their experience. So in this event, you'll see the section that says options, ideas, and brainstorm. We actually meet with the customer, um, with the client, the person holding the event, and we go to the convention center and we have something called a tasting. So this is the menu from the tasting. And at that tasting, we have a chance to try a bunch of food that our um, attendees might be going to eat. It's really fun. We get to taste lots of things. We get to think about lots of things. We get to think about budget, dietary needs. Do they need gluten-free? Do they need vegan food? Do they need food that doesn't have nuts in it? And then we get to think about how it looks and um, make notes. You can see some of my scribbles on that menu about things we need to change. And then on the day of the event, this food will be served. Another thing I work on at this event is the floor plans, how the space is going to be laid out. You can see a map of the main hall here. You see all the tables for the over 500 to 600 attendees that come. You see the main hall space and you see an idea sketch that I did of an area where um, attendees can come together to chat around high tables. We use some balloons just to mark the space so that people can see it from far away. You see an exhibit hall here full of people sharing information. You may have been to an exhibit hall if you went to a college fair or um, some other fair where their people are presenting lots of little bits about things they do in your community. So that's one of the things I work on for many months is to get this right and to make sure that the space is going to flow. So that event that I just shared with you, the Washington Nonprofits Conference, takes me um, 
almost a year to help plan. During this period of time where we've gone into um, having things shift because of COVID, this event went online this year. So instead of meeting in this space, let's go back, instead of meeting in this space, they met online, um, which changes what event planners do, but event planners also have jobs when things go online because people always need detail-oriented people who can make fun things happen. If what I just shared with you sparks your interest, there are lots of great websites to check out. Meeting Planners International, MPI.org, has lots of information about certifications and education and just facts and cool data about event planning. Eventplannercertification.com is a site that I found recently that shares a little bit about what it looks like to become an event planner. And I did take a look around Vermont, and it looks like Vermont Technical Institute offers some courses that are not very expensive and might share a little bit with you about what a great event looks like. So there's a few places you can explore. One other thing I wanted to share with you is that when you choose a career path, sometimes those same skills can be used in lots of ways. So the sk same skills I use as an event planner, I used as a catering manager. Catering managers might even be called the event planners of the restaurant world because they're working with customers to imagine events and imagine food and um, sometimes even venue details that make those events awesome. So these are some pictures from when I worked at Marination. Marination is a woman-owned um, business here in Seattle that I mentioned earlier grew from very small to very large. And my job there was to work with all the customers, close to 2,000 a year, um, who ordered food from us from six trays of food for an office lunch to food for 10,000 um, at a different, um, let's see, a party, a wedding, something like that, some big corporate event. So there's lots of ways you can use the same skill set, which is super exciting to find a profession where you can find places to work in many places. Event planners sometimes work in hotels, doing management for them. They sometimes work for convention centers. They sometimes work for corporations and customers. So there's lots of different ways you can plug into event planning and lots of different levels you can start at from very um, skilled levels where you've done lots of work to very entry levels where you can come in and be mentored by someone else. So what do I love about event planning? I love that it's fast paced. I love that I get to visit new places and spaces. I love that I get to engage the finished product, meaning I get to be in the room when it's happening. I love that it makes people happy. You get to see them smile. You get to see them enjoy a great meal. Sometimes you have to help them to um, when there's an issue at an event, but most of the time you get to see people happy. I get to learn from experts, so I constantly get to engage with experts in the field, and I've had many great mentors who taught me all that they know about event planning so that we can make a great event together. I love working with amazing companies. Right now I'm working with Brooks, Running Shoes, um, and I've worked with Microsoft and some other fun companies that have homes here in Seattle. So I think if you like organization, you like working on teams, you like a good spreadsheet, and, and you like being creative, you might like being an event planner. I hope that if you have any questions that you work with your team there to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer questions and I hope that in the coming months and years you find a profession, whether it's event planning, being a doctor, being a teacher, there's so many amazing things you can do in the world and I think um, learning about them, you find out about things you would have never known about before. Have a great day.